and we're live beaming to you from sydney australia live on this holiday monday long weekend in uh just about all of australia i think it's the queen's birthday or something like that whatever that means being a queen and a country celebrating your birthday but um hey it's a public holiday so i hope you're all enjoying it here in australia and if you're in the rest of the world wherever that may be i hope that you're having a wonderful sunday evening or sunday afternoon sunday night in your neck of the woods whether it's summer winter autumn because we're all one on this globe or flat pancake depending on what you believe um okay so today today we've got like a pretty awesome rant that i've come up with and um well we've got ray that's joined us how are you ray always good to see you brother israel's joined us hi israel how are you hope you guys are doing well um today we're going to explore unslaving from the machine and what that really means to me anyway because this is all speculation this is all subjective opinion uh this is all my opinion hey from from my direct experience um but my opinion all the same pamela's joined us how are you pamela you're a newbie i haven't seen your name pop up um we've seen uh, the tasmanian dude how are you the flat pancake pamela i like you already so um good to see you to to the tasmanian who's getting ready to unleash some of his own facebook lives very very soon so we'll help promote those for you mr tasmanian um i know what it's like when you're gearing up to like share yourself with the whole world live unedited not recorded it's not easy when you're first doing it so um i'm looking forward to seeing you um unleash your spiritual badassery brother um so Oh, Fernando Vicario has just joined us. Uncle, love you. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, Pamela's saying hello from Oregon. Oregon, Portland, Oregon, I believe that is. Nathan has just thrown us a heart. Nath, always good to see you, brother. So, guys, let's get started on this topic that we're going to explore today, which is unslaving from the machine. We're going to go into this um, as usual. I will be kind of a bit scattered going here and there and then pulling it all together into the one message um, when we get around about halfway into the live cast. Um, big love to you, Nathan. So the first thing I want to start with today in unslaving from the machine is culture. This is what I think is is the first step in this in this exploration today. Now, culture is something that we all experience when we come into this virtual reality. We incarnate, we come into this world, we take our position in this meat machine, this avatar, and um, wherever we incarnate on this planet, um, that geographic place that particular uh, density if you want to say will have a whole lot of other avatars a whole lot of other meat machines and entities that are experiencing 3d virtual reality in this dense kind of carbon machine that we operate and because they're all together in a certain geographic area uh, over long long periods of time you know coming in and out cultures develop and these cultures are different for different parts of the world but they develop for the same reasons and they operate in the same way um, and they're quite enslaving in a sense my good friend scott bogdan from altered perception always says in a lot of his po posts culture is not your friend and it really isn't and we're going to go into uh how this affects us in this topic of unslaving from the machine which is really all about 
uh, inner anarchy, finding ourselves, what we really are, who we really are, what this really is, what our mission is, what our purpose is, um, and shifting from fear into love. We'll get into all of that uh, during this uh, live cast. So culture is something that kind of programs us. It loads us up with belief. It creates clinging. And, um, and, and we, we tend to cling to those beliefs because we grow up with them and, and it's all around us with, with everyone that we're in contact with. In the very nature of that culture, most people, most entities in that culture take on the beliefs as though they are real, as though they are, uh, you know, fact, that that is the nature of reality. Now, the beliefs are real, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the beliefs are true um, or that they are part of the nature of reality. And those beliefs can create so many traps for us um, that can take many decades to see through, that can take many decades to outgrow. And um, this is the problem with, with culture. And in some parts of the world, some cultures, you know, because you've, you've got subcultures within cultures as well, um, depending on, on geography, socioeconomic um, factors come into play a lot. Um, and that's on both sides of the scale, positives and negatives um, from, from the bottom or the, what we would refer to as a lower socioeconomic through up to the higher. Um, and a, as I mentioned, both of those sides of the scale and everything in between are quite dense and drenched uh, with the positive and negative aspects to, to culture. And that kind of like connects us it connects us to the beliefs. It connects us to um, the expectations of society or the machine, you know, and, and, and us kind of like taking our place in that unconscious, automated, autopilot, drone type of hypnotized existence. And this happens over time as we're growing up. Because uh, when we're young, we, we're like sponges. We, we take in everything. So during those young years, we're taking in all the culture, all the positives, all the negatives. And we're, we're taking our place in the expectation of the machine. And as we start to grow up, uh, we start to lose our essence. We start to lose the knowledge of who we are and we forget we forget how beautiful that emptiness that silence that creative space where there's nothing to go by except our own spark our own human soul if we want to call it that we we, we forget that and we take on the more mechanical uh, expectations of the machine and then what happens is uh, we start to get this feeling that something is wrong and that feeling starts probably for most of us in our teen years and that's part of the the rebellion and part of trying to uh, deal with with the things that we're seeing as being unjust unfair that don't feel right but we because we're we're young and because we're during a crazy stage of our of our lives it doesn't really make sense on a deeper level and so it may take decades for us to get our head around this and to open our hearts because during that time um we'll get hurt you know this goes for now both sides of um the coin with male and female we get hurt by the opposite sex. We get hurt by close relationships when we fall in love and we um, expose our underbelly and, and it gets hurt and we take it personally. Um, and then we, in our anger and hurt, shine out um, 
the expectations that were put on us by the machine and then we pump out those expectations back out towards the people who have hurt us and that way we perpetuate the culture we perpetuate this unconscious confusion um, this drone state and you know I know that if I walk out my door and um, say hello to my neighbors and I walk down the street and, and go to to the shops or whatever all the interactions that I'm having in that journey um, on a on a normal everyday um, morning are very limited if I start to engage with conversations like what we're going to explore here today um, on this live cast more often than not eyebrows will be raised and my sanity may even be questioned so that's all part of culture you know uh, and we see it on Friday nights Saturday nights you know let's go out and get trashed let's all get together and get so pissed off our tits that we're just in a drunken stupor and then let's like start a fight with someone or uh, pick a fight with our partner you know because maybe they looked at some other girl or some other guy and so all of the anger that we've had pent up because speaking like this is not usually normal in the culture we lash out in the drunken stupor and we make complete dicks of ourselves to everyone around who can see and then the next day we have to deal with what we've done if we remember and then we spend the week kind of patching up the problem until next weekend where Friday night we all get together again and get shit faced all over again and that's a pattern and that's just one example of culture so and and the in the culture of alcohol is a really really uh, scary dangerous um, deeply sad culture especially when um, governments in their warm-hearted wisdom promote alcohol and um, and make other natural medicines illegal and lock people up for it but hey that's all part of what we have to deal with in this 3d virtual reality as as part of growing up um, and this culture thing is something that we have to as individuals outgrow and that's not easy because culture is it dominates all parts of our lives it dominates how we interact with other people it dominates our belief system even on a religious spiritual level um, it dominates how we judge other people how we accept um, what is normal what's good what's bad um, you know how how we even love and I use that term love as a broad blanket term right here because that's not really love but that's let, let's just call it love so we all know what what we're talking about um, you know a a droned down zombified unconscious version of what we call love that's really more like a business transaction um, for companionship uh, you know we do a deal because it suits our needs after all we do need to pay bills um, and perpetuate this state of emptiness by trying to accumulate material things pay for them repeatedly um, get stuck into contracts by big corporations that um, you know make a sign on the dotted line to pretty much put us in a position where we can't get out of it you know if we change our minds and we're forced to pay or else we're put into the court system so on so on so on so you know love is not a business deal that we do when we hook up with another person so we can make that uh, journey through through life to pay all these things to perpetuate this emptiness because it's a whole lot easier to do it when you hook up with someone else because after all they earn money as well 
so you know you can link your wage with their wage and that way you can buy more shit and perpetuate um, the emptiness even more and of course you've got someone to blame when you get home and you've got the sore shits because your boss has like completely humiliated you for the 5,000th time and because we're so empty and there's no meaning and we feel so trapped and we don't know how to get out of it, when we get home, of course, we do the same to our partner because they're there and because it's easy and we need an outlet. And after all, we've been driving for an hour from the office or the warehouse or whatever to go home and all that time we've been stewing on shit. You know, so of course, when we open the door, the significant other cops a mouthful and an attitude and of course they get their back up like what the hell is going on like boom and they fire some missiles back and then next thing we've got a full turf war going on in the home it takes a lot it takes love to work that out it takes unconditional love the only love to work that out and that can be decades in the making and some people when i say some people i mean the vast majority of people never even get to that point where they become aware of it let alone take responsibility let it alone say fuck this shit who cares like who's in the right or wrong who cares like come over here give me a hug i love you i love you i'm sorry Let's just try our best to, 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 to outgrow this together. Get our heads around it. You know, hell, Trace and I are doing it. If we're doing it, man, no one's got an excuse. You know, I mean, Trace is pretty switched on. But, like, I'm a pretty stubborn monkey. You know, I'm very combative in how I engage with things sometimes. Far less than what I used to be, but still... You know, I'm just a stubborn, thick-headed chimp. Um, so if, if I'm doing it, literally, it, like, it, anybody can. You know what I mean? Um, my own awakening over the past 12 months or so, you know, everything has been against me. You know, I was loaded up to the tips with debt. You know, I mean, heaps through just bad decisions, big ego, all that stuff. So I'm transitioning now. I'm uh, I'm downsizing. I'm becoming leaner so I can so I can move ahead properly with this. But I'm dealing with like all this mountain of debt that I accumulated. It's not easy. Like my earnings have dropped heaps. You know, I'm getting the awakening point up and running. Like it's put a lot of pressure on us. Or so it seemed at the beginning. Now not so much because Trace and I worked through it together. We battled through the culture. We battled through the unconscious, automated bullshit that just fires out because the neighbor does it, that neighbor does it, everyone that we've ever grown up with does it. You know, couples are like going broke, fighting each other in court to get divorced. What the hell? You know, it's not, they're not awakened. They're unconscious. They're feeding the devil. You know, I'm not saying that in a religious sense. I'm saying that like the enemy. They're feeding the enemy of the human spirit. They're feeding the machine because they're so angry that they're going against each other, lining the pockets of the lawyers who just love this shit um, so they can drive fast sports cars. Meanwhile, families being ripped apart because two people cannot get together and sort out their own shit through being loving doesn't mean you have to stay together but through being loving taking a loving position dealing with it in in an awakened state you can sort it out and i know it's not that easy i know that i know there are some of you out there dealing with this kind of stuff right now um you know who, who have got partners that are not reasonable i i understand that but you know what? When it gets down to it, that's still what's left. You've got to deal with it by shifting from a fear-based state into a love-based state. And this is how we outgrow our fears and start to unslave from the machine. Start to become aware. I did a live cast last week where I was talking about awareness and darkness. 
going from an unconscious state to a conscious state, this is what I'm talking about here, to outgrow culture, to outgrow the zombified state where you're just automatically doing shit without understanding why, you know? Um, And that, uh, over decades, just leads to, of course, a very angered, upset, low vibration, very, very dense, weighted down, victimized kind of outlook, 24 hours a day. Because there's confusion, there's darkness, there's no illumination. It's like, what the hell? How do I, how do I deal with this? It's just a constant angry state. How do you, how do you find peace? How do you find happiness? How do you find fulfillment? How do you find your mission? How do you become aware of your purpose in this life? Irrespective of financial success, that's, that, that's nothing. That's, that's nothing. That's not going to distract for long. You know, sure, a Lamborghini or a penthouse apartment with a stunning, you know, vision, uh, uh, you know, harbor view. Yes, that will distract for a little while, maybe one year, maybe three years, maybe even 10 years. But it ain't going to distract for long, longer than that. You will get used to it. That will become normal. And then as soon as that happens, you're back at the same place before you had all those distractions and you're still going to have to deal with that anger you're still going to have to deal with at night that confusion that hole here because there's a lack of love there's a lack of awareness and and that is the first step to outgrowing and detaching from the culture so you can start to do your own thing because whether you're starting your own business and we can for those that have got a problem with that word business you know oh, it's not spiritual we're going to talk about money now um, let's call it like finding your path in life and earning your living doing what you love what's your passion we're not necessarily talking about becoming like the wealthiest man in Mexico, you know. We're not talking about um, becoming a con artist and like fleecing people of, of their money and stuff like that. We're just talking about earning a living here. So, um, you know, whether it's you're starting a business as an entrepreneurial venture for yourself to, to follow your bliss, whether you're dealing with, um, you know, a family situation and you're trying to like bring your family together in a more loving way it it doesn't matter what you're doing whether you're dealing with a split up whether you're a single parent whether you're you know been driving a truck for 25 years and you want something more but you don't know where to start and you feel that you're not good enough to, to, to find your own way you feel that you don't you don't have what it takes so you just stay there but inside every day it's driving you crazy doesn't matter what your situation is the way to start dealing with it is shifting from a fear-based posture or attitude into a love-based attitude letting go of the me 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 stuff okay and that's when things start to become clear that's how it worked for me and I use that in past tense and I probably shouldn't it's still happening and I'm, I'm still at the beginning of this journey you know I'm by no means saying I'm some kind of awakened human that ain't the case you know and I don't really think that I want to um, speak of myself in those terms I quite like the chimp routine you know um so we'll get to that towards the end of the 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 live cast today so culture is something that we 
start to outgrow by looking within? The answer is always looking within. The answer is never out here because out here, we're just projecting out what's in here. It's all a subjective experience, you know. And for those that are really interested, you can, you know, um, go onto YouTube and just write up uh, Dr. Andrew Gallimore, who's, uh, you know, a scientist that deals with the brain, very bright young man. Um, and just listen from a scientist's point of view how the brain creates the world for us to interact with in a way that we understand and how the brain does that. It's really, really interesting to, to see from a scientific standpoint how subjective all of this really is. It's important that we understand how subjective it is. It's important to understand that consciousness is fundamental. This is all happening within consciousness. It's not separate to it. When we understand that, really we empower ourselves in a way where it's like, man, I can make a difference here. I'm doing this. The minute we really realize that we're doing this, we start to become aware already. We're not victims. This is not happening to us. We are part of this projecting out our subjective reality out there like all the other 7 billion of us all at once as a collective but it's happening as individuated little units of consciousness technically free will awareness units for you MBT people um, so inner anarchy that place that has no form when I meditate every day I just lie there relax close my eyes and just ain't looking for any experience ain't looking for anything I just like to be in a place where there's inner anarchy there's nothing to go by there's no reference point there's just a beautiful creative I can't even use the word place because it's not a place. State. A beautiful creative state where there's full potential. There's nothing there other than what I create. And our lives are exactly like that. That's what I'm kind of working out for myself. I can create whatever kind of life that I want and intent is the driver see that's what creates the long-term stamina the marathon to be able to to stay with it it takes time to get your intent pure because your ego can fuck around with it you may think that you're kind of like and, I, and I'll use the word I because this is what I've experienced I may think that I'm doing something for the greater good for a good reason when really over time I see that, no, I was kind of lying to myself. Because, yeah, I want to help a lot of people, but what I really want is to help myself. Because I really, really want that new sports car or that big house. So if I say that what I really want to do is help other people, then it makes me look like a good guy. So that's just one example of what I've been through. There's lots, but that's another live cast. So inner anarchy is important because it doesn't attach us to a label. And Yuri Zaritsky from Lucidity for All really brought that to the fore for me during our very first live cast together when Yuri presented the truth about um, quietening internal dialogue straight away hit a point with me I straight away realized wow this is this is very important this gives birth to like creative energies that are so freaking powerful that can change they have the power to change 
that have the power to illuminate, to make us aware. And this is a huge part of unslaving from the machine, living our own lives. creating our own lives as we shift from a fee-based outlook to a love-based outlook. It's a process. It's a huge process that demands serious commitment. It takes time. You know, we're talking major effort here. Um, just just seeing and understanding how much we are part of the cookie cutter machine on the conveyor belt, how unconscious we are, how automated our existence is. We are truly more like robots than human beings. This system we live in really has created, whether it's been by design or not, that's not the point. It's really created, turned us into more machines than anything. So it's a big process, takes a lot of courage to really see that for what it is without putting silly labels on it. You know, like feeding a rebellious side, our ego, I'm breaking free of the machine because I'm an individual. You know, it's not, well, I'm not really talking about that. So for those of you who, you know, get excited by that kind of stuff, and I do too, I must admit, let's kind of pull the reins back on that and, and stay open in a state of inner anarchy and not put that kind of label on this. So inner anarchy is important because as long as we're following something outside of us, we're not, we're not really doing the work, the, re the real work. The real work is up to each one of us to live, live that work every day in every decision we make. The little things are the big things. Intent is so important there as we move from fear into love. So inner anarchy is important because it allows us to do this ourselves, not follow a system or a philosophy or an idea, whatever you want to call it. That even goes for MBT. And that's why I love MBT so much. And that's why I love Tom Campbell so much because he himself even says, that it's about forming your own big toe, not following mine. Doesn't want us to follow him, doesn't want us to believe him. And it even takes time to fully embrace and appreciate what that really means. So this state of inner anarchy is so important. Detaches us from all expectation that detaches us from all of the labels, puts us in a state where there's just nothing but potential. And then we start from there. That can be scary. It can be confusing because it's like, where do I, where do I go? We're so used to following something. We're so used to starting with some kind of form somewhere that for us to start this on a blank state of just pure potential it takes time we need patience it's not something that we're used to we've forgotten it we've forgotten it so this is one of the things that really has helped me more than anything else and yes it can take a lot of time but once you start you're then miles ahead because it's one thing to follow a system and know that system. You can like rattle off 
intellectually all the nuts and bolts of that system and it appears that you've got your shit together. It appears that you do externally as well as internally to other people that can see you plus you yourself. The problem is that then you've got to undo all of that and there's a lot of ego attached to that because it's like, how am I going to eat this humble pie? How am I going to U-turn and come back when I've built this illusion of myself that I've got all my shit together and that I know so much about the system that I've been following all these years. So in anarchy, when it's introduced in a situation like that, can be very confronting. This is where th that those limiting beliefs, the real dense, heavy cultures, it's like, man, it, it, it stops us. We stop ourselves because of it. And we get trapped and we get stuck. We're in that quicksand and the vast majority never get out. They just accept, they resign to it. So I'm not speaking of this in a way that, that makes it sound easy. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, my God. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And, um, you know, this is going to take a long time. I've just started on this, but at the same time, you know, I've never been so fulfilled. I've never been as happy as what I, what I am now because, like, it's inside me. It's not due to external factors, you know. That's a beautiful thing. That's a really powerful thing. Um... I, f I feel like a real person. So it's slowly, bit by bit, unslaving from the machine by increasing awareness and love. That's how you do it. So breaking through the culture, going into that state of inner anarchy, finding yourself in there. And then starting brand new and creating a new life bit by bit by every tiny little decision that's made every day in the moment. Being present with that. Being patient with yourself, with others, with the process. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Just let it let it happen. I'm saying this not from some kind of, you know, place up the top of a mountain like I'm some guru. Shit, no. But this is this is what I experience every day. So I'm communicating that passionately because hell, I'm going through it every day. This is my direct experience, this is my life. And I'm sharing it with you guys in real time. So let's move on. I've got like so many comments that have popped up here and guys, I'm going to um, go through those. Um, there's some pretty deep stuff coming out of here by you guys, you, you, your legends. Um, I will start posting it up. Um, I just got a bit carried away there. So Rabina, bit every day. Rabina is going through the same sort of thing. Um, an awakening, uh, same as what, what I've, I've been going through. Our, our stories are very parallel. Love to see you here, Rabina. You're a legend. Thanks for joining us. So we've gone, we've touched on culture, we've touched on inner anarchy. Now it's time for that part where we're aware enough to now start to detach from our participation so we've touched on culture and inner anarchy these things are like uh, conceptual in nature you know they're theoretical in nature um, now this bit is where we start to engage 
we turn it into action. We start to actually express this awareness during our decisions every day. As we start now to put it into action and start to create our lives, a lot of that is where we start to make a decision to not participate in the culture, to not participate in what everyone else is doing, to not participate in this cookie cutter that this machine robotic existence that is devoid of heart, that's devoid of intuition, that's devoid of the love of the human spirit. Trace put a comment up before saying something along the lines of fuck the machine. I love you, baby. <laughs> and and yes, fuck that. Because that's what that's how this has happened over decades. We're easier to handle if we're not if our hearts are not open. We're more like programs, we're more like robots. That's that's what makes us so wonderful. It's not this, it's this. The power of of the heart, of intuition. That uncertainty of being human. It's crazy shit. Anything can happen. It's like so illogical at times. Yet it's like, my God, that just inspired me to my very soul watching, experiencing somebody just reach out and and love another human being openly without conditions. It's like, yes, that's, that's it. That's it, man. So by not participating in the machine, by not participating in the culture, by not participating in being unconscious, by not participating in being automated and and just doing the same shit all the time and being confused and all this stuff, by not participating in that, man, we start to wake up. The Tasmanian has put a comment up. I don't know how you express all of this, but man, you're doing well. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Look, um, when I first started doing these live casts last December, man, I was horrendous. I didn't even know like what I was talking about. I mean, most times when I do a live cast, I still I don't know what I'm really going to say. I can't plan it out because it just doesn't come out properly and when I do plan it out I never stick to it anyway so I just even today's a really planned one I think I spent five minutes this morning just putting it into uh, topics that you see at the bottom of my screen now just to like keep me on some kind of a uh, linear type of journey but I don't enjoy doing it that way I like just going freestyle Um, so yeah bro it just like anything practice 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 you keep doing it you keep doing it you become more comfortable with it um you keep uh not participating in you know telling yourself that you're afraid of what other people think you don't participate in that anymore and that then brings out this courage it's not a forced courage you know, it's not like you're afraid going, oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And you're just building up to No, it's just something that the fear just melts away. And you have this beautiful organic courage that, that's just awareness illuminating. It's like, oh, is that all that it is? I was just like thinking that it's important what other people think of me or the opinions they have or the expectations I'm not saying this like other people are bad and they're like no no nothing like that it's just purely what it is so by becoming aware of all of that you seriously empower yourself this other version real, the real the real Tasmanian comes out free of all those 
limiting beliefs, free of all of that culture, free of that conditioning, free of that programming. This human spirit, or not even human, this spirit just comes out and illuminates and you're like, wow. And it just happens. Love, baby. Love, the power of love. It's powerful stuff. So anyway, I better get back to it because like I... <laughs> um, so Lisa. Yes, I love your post to inspiration. Good to see you, Lisa. Always good to see you. So we're talking about non-participation in the machine. The, the bit where this is the action part. This is, it sounds like action, but it's non-action. It sounds like it's something that we're doing, but the doing is the non-doing. By not participating in these programs, by not participating in the unconscious programming of the machine, and instead allowing our human spirit, allowing that creative wildness, that state of inner anarchy, we just start to illuminate the path forward. And it's just natural, it just happens. So by not doing, we allow ourselves to do what's, what's, what we really need to do, what's important. We create the path by not trying to create it, but instead becoming illuminated, aware of it. Oh, there it is. But it's being projected by us. As individuals, we are creating that path. No one else can see it. Only we can see it. Because we're all in this together. But we each individually have to do our part. Yeah? That's the ultimate truth. The ultimate responsibility. We can't just say, oh, we're all in this together. So I won't do shit. And I'll just let someone else do it. Because every tiny little decision that we make, whether it's on the side of fear or on the side of love, lifts or drops the whole awareness of the entire system, of the entire world. So each time we make a decision that's a love-based decision, we lift it. Oh, awesome. Or in MBT speak, we lower entropy. But I don't want to confuse everyone. So, um, And that's the way we do it. And because 7 billion of us are all making decisions all at the same time, that's like creating the reality that we're in second by second. The, all of those individual binary fears or loves create the state of the whole world. So when things are going absolutely awesome in the world, hey, there's more individuals making more love-based decisions that, that are winning. When things are start to go really bad, uh, the fear is winning. And it's a flux. It's a natural flux. There's not one side that's like meant to have some kind of overall uh, victory in the end because there is no end. This thing is like a, an incomplete picture. Always will be fractally through multiple dimensions. Things that we can't even understand right now because we're human, but it's, it's there and happening. In, in other reality states. It's all fractal, like it just, that's how it happens. You can't have love without fear. So this non-participating in the unconsciousness, in the fear, when you stop participating in fear, guess what? Love just starts to well up. And you think to yourself, where am I getting this from? Like, where is this coming from? Because that, that's what happens by nature. When the fear subsides, love fills that void. 
So non-participating, non-participation in the machine is very important. That's the action part. That's the thing that we're doing every day. The action of non-action. For those of you that are familiar with the Tao, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with the Tao, you need to be. The Tao is... I'm not even going to try to go there because... Some of the greatest souls that have occupied avatars in this realm can't explain it properly. So, this monkey ain't going to try. Google it. YouTube it. So... That's an, that's an important step in all of this. The marathon of commitment to this, to what we've spoken about already, is what gives us the stamina. This is not something that you're going to try to do for a few weeks and then throw in the towel and say, fuck this, this is too hard, man. It's not like that. It's not like that. This is a commitment that is beyond uh, what the word commitment even means. I mean, it's, it's this type of commitment is a way of life. It's this type of commitment, it, it's a lifelong marathon and beyond. You, you know, we're not gonna work this shit out in this lifetime. We haven't in all the previous ones. It ain't going to happen in this one. I mean, for the for some very few evolved souls, yes. But you can see those a mile off. You know, you can see those a mile off. I still remember the first day I met Tom Campbell. My God. Is it even possible for a human being to be that evolved? It's just, it's, it's just inspiring just to be in the presence of someone like that. I remember he lectured for two straight days when he came into Sydney and I was so, I lost time. I was, I was just, I was just there like listening to him, living it, breathing it for two days and I, I lost time. And even if he would have been speaking Chinese and reciting, you know, some scripture or something I'd, that I wouldn't have mattered I would have been engaged with him for the whole two days just boom because there's just something special about an evolved human being like that that occupies that, that owns that space they occupy and it's just driven by love it's such an evolved state it's just beautiful inspires me to no end so this commitment to the lifelong and beyond marathon that we're running you know you don't let the machine the culture the unconscious you, know, you just don't let that get to you anymore it still happens it still happens I still have like little fights in my head Ah, uh, Mike, who do you think you are doing live casts? You imbecile. You're a monkey. No one's going to ever listen to you. There used to be a show um, with Daryl Summers on Sydney TV called Hey Hey It's Saturday. And this little like doll thing would pop up and say shit and like go down. There'd be a, a whipping sound and it'd go under the table again. It was hilarious. And that's what, that's what it sounds like sometimes in my head. Just this stupid like... You know, these stupid puppets popping up. Yeah, you're an idiot. Who's going to listen to you? You know, or I might be going through the day and out of the blue, you know, this puppet pops up and says something completely retarded. I don't listen to it anymore. It still happens, but you can't let that kind of shit really affect the marathon. If you need to rest, rest. Hell yes. If you feel overwhelmed, fine. Be overwhelmed. If you've got stuff going on in your head, 
and you feel down for that day, fine. Let stuff go on in your head and be down that day. This is a lifelong thing. Joe Fox is saying ego. Yes. Yes, man. Big time. Big time. So, yes, Fernando. His name is Dicky. That that little doll from... Uh, <laughs> now I'm remembering. Yes. Good old Dicky. It's such an appropriate name. So, committing to this marathon of awakening of non-participating in the things that that keep us unconscious that keep us in that low density state is like we're not looking for per perfection we're not looking to like complete the picture we're not looking to like uh, you know, having those expectations doesn't help that's part of the thing that we're not participating in. Not participating. I'm not gonna have those expectations. Joe Fox, I'm learning. The Tasmanian, ah, the humor, <laughs> yes. You need humor, man. Humor is what gives us stamina to keep running, to keep the marathon going. So that brings us to the deep intent driving our conscious awareness as we live, as we start to become U-turners. What's a U-turner? A U-turner is someone that does a U-turn and goes back. A U-turner is someone that kind of stops doing things for themselves and realizes, starts to awaken to what's really going on and goes back, does a U-turn and heads back internally to sort out their own shit and externally to kind of like be an example and, and show others that this can be done. Not from a point of view of teaching them this is how to do it, but just like, here's what I'm doing. You know, so a U-turner is not a teacher. A U-turner is in the trench. Is right in the thick of it with everyone. And that's, I think, where I, where I learn the most. This is where I learn the most. This is where I shed ego. This is where I eat humble pie. This is where I feel the love of the human spirit. Where I feel unconditional love and the power of it. Where you get upgraded. Through appreciating the love that's possible between souls, between people who are struggling, who are battling through life. Um, that state is beautiful. And I love being around. I love being around it. And I never want to be away from that. So that's what I call a U-turner. The intent that's driving that. The intent. It's not about making money. It's, it's not about success in the material way. Success is something totally different. Much bigger. Much bigger. And it involves not just us, but other people. Because in the end, this whole thing about unslaving from the machine, 
becoming aware of our power as human beings to like create our lives. It's all a process where we're moving from fear to love, where we're evolving from fear to love, where we're outgrowing our own fears and allowing love to occupy us, to fill us. And doing that all day, every day, in all the little decisions that we're making bit by bit in all the interactions that we have. Because it's what it's all about. It, it's what it's always about. You know, we can we can make this as specific as we can to all range of different topics. But it always comes down to, to what's really important. For me, what's really important is that I outgrow my own fears. As Michael, that I that I become aware of those fears, that I engage with those fears in a loving way, that I make love-based decisions instead of fear-based decisions. Because my intuition tells me that this is what's really important. There's something bigger than this world and it comes down to love. So, that's what all of this boils down to in the end. This is how we become independent of the machine. This is how we fulfill living great lives, inspired lives. This is how we go to bed at night feeling loved. Putting our head on the pillow and sleeping, man. Just sleeping. That fulfillment, that purpose, living our mission every day. Because our mission is just a specific version of moving from fear to love. It's a specific version of that. And it can happen in so many different ways. Dealing with our employees, dealing with our bosses, dealing with our clients, dealing with our family, dealing with strangers, dealing with ourselves. In this world and in other realities. Because in other realities, like in the dream state, it's the same thing, man. That's what it comes down to. I've experienced that. I'm experiencing it like crazy right now, more and more. So it's something beyond this world. That's how important it is. Now, I've got some shout outs. I want to shout out to Fernando and Jamila from Oracle of Secrets. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So I'll be seeing you guys next week. I want to say a shout out to Adam Roberts from NBPH. We'll be talking later on today, brother. We're almost there as well. I want to give a shout out to Emmy Suarez from Argentina, El Argentino. Um, Emmy's a beautiful young man. I love connecting with you, Emmy. Keep going, brother. I want to do a, say a big shout out to the Tasmanian. A lot of uh, courage in this gentleman, and I feel he's getting ready to make a move. Um, and I'll be there when he does so big shout out to you brother uh, shout out to Rabina of course from Shift Your Life Rabina um, is a real warrior she's been through a lot and she's shifting she's awakening she's following her path she's creating her way forward she's overcoming her culture, she's not participating in the machine and she's um, she's doing just great and I look forward to having her on the show again. 
a huge sh shout out to Yuri Zaritsky from Lucidity for All. Yuri, brother, you're a real inspiration to me. Um, you really are. A lot of people can learn a lot from Yuri. Let's just say that. And, you know, just got a, a beautiful group over there at Lucidity for All on Facebook. A huge shout out to Tanya Mully and Paige Lionheart. Um, these two warriors were involved in a car accident um, a couple of days ago. And um, last I heard yesterday, both were still in hospital. I don't know if you guys are still in hospital today or not. I'm sending you all my love from Trace, myself and the kids. I love you both very much. You're complete and utter warriors in the most beautiful sense. Um, and I'll touch base with you guys after this live cast to see how you're going. So big love to you both. Hope you're doing okay. A big shout out to Vittorio Aquaro from Unified Therapy. And guys on Facebook, if you want to just jump on uh, Vittorio's new page, his Facebook page on Unified Therapy, give him a like there. Uh, Vittorio's not only one of my best buddies in the whole world, but he's a very important mentor to me in um, helping me make sense of what's been going on in my life for the last year. I want to give a shout out to Mark Hess from Shut Up and Feel. Uh, Mark has taken the, the plunge, faced his fears and is like um, doing a lot of live casts at the moment where he's working through you know, that process of moving from fear to love in a very open way, very healing. And, um, you know, it's some of the most potent medicine to outgrow your fears, to jump on Facebook Live and talk about what you're going through. So, Mark, you're a real warrior. I know you get the power of live casting and, um, and the healing properties of it. So, um, big shout out to you, brother. Of course, there's my brother from another mother, Mr. Scott Bogdan from Altered Perception. Big shout out to you, bro. Absolutely love you. Think about you every single day. And for those of you that haven't uh, liked Scott's page over at Altered Perceptions, go over there on Facebook and give him a like. This young man is an absolute legend and I love him to death. He's my brother. Golden Duffy from the M21 Challenge. Golden, love you to death. Follow all your stuff. Think about you every day as well. Um, you're a real warrior. And um, for those of you who don't know about Golden's M21 Challenge, jump on her Facebook page or Google M21 Challenge. Um, you know, Golden is someone who's been through a lot. And that's why when she speaks, I listen. She's been in the trench hard, man. And she still lives there. That's what I love about her the most. Uh, Jacques from 4S for Life. Big shout out to you, Jacques. Love you to death. I uh, love having you on the show, brother. Um, you know, for those of you who haven't jumped on Jacques' podcast, 4S for Life, um, jump on there and listen. It's really good stuff. He's all heart and uh, deals in subjects that are, that are very community-based or from the heart, exactly what we need. Um, big shout out to Adam Ozamak, Mr. ASX Trader himself. Um, this young man is like really cutting a path for himself. Um, I love his rawness. I love his passion. He's an all-around good guy. So I just wanted to give you a shout out, Adam. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. And finally, uh, for those of you who would like to join us in the Awakening Point Facebook group, not our Facebook page, but our Facebook group. It's a closed group. All you need to do is type 1111 in the comments section and I'll add you to that group. Um, it's just a place where you can express yourself uh, freely in good company without any expectations, without any fears of being judged in any way, shape or form. And you can be part of um, the awakening point morphing and evolving into whatever it's going to be and it's important that we get some big hearts and souls that are going through their process every day in the trench we need you guys we need your opinion 
on things and what you're going through and for you to share yourselves with us and your stories. Um, that's what we that's what we're all about. That's what we love. That's what the awakening point is all about. So um, again, for those of you that are going to watch this in the coming days and weeks, all you need to do is just put 1111 down in the comments section. I'll add you to the awakening point group. Um, I welcome you there and you'll be amongst really good loving company we got some great um, people some great souls having this human experience that are in that group that will share their knowledge and um, you know we got some great up and coming energy in there we really do so that's enough for me today um, I want to thank each and every one of you absolutely love you guys to death you know I honestly did not expect this much participation or people tuning in on a public holiday Monday um, so I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart thank you so much keep your head up keep your heart strong keep fighting the fight in outgrowing your fears and moving to love and I'll see you guys tomorrow I'll be back on the live cast I've got a hero's journey live cast tomorrow same time same bat channel um, this is like a version of the awakened hero's journey in reference to what we were talking about today so um, it's, it'll really hit home with a lot of you as it has with me so I look forward to seeing you guys on tomorrow's livecast as well love you have a great day see you tomorrow